Hello everyone. So, welcome to the last lecture of uh, the second module of this course. In the past lectures in this module, we will have learned that how to solve a nonlinear equation. In particular, for finding the roots of nonlinear equations, we learn several methods including bisection method, then regular fallacy and second method. Later on, we have, uh, have gone to the uh, Newton direction method and finally, fixed point iteration methods. In today lecture, we will learn about how to solve a system of nonlinear equations. In particular, we will focus on two methods that is Newton Raphson and fixed point iteration for doing this job. So, first of all, let me tell you what is a system of nonlinear equations. So, consider a system of n nonlinear equations having n unknowns and written as f1 of x1, x2, xn equals to 0, f2 again a nonlinear equation in x1, x2, xn that is 0 and so on and finally, nth equation is fn in x1, x2, xn equals to 0. So, here you can see we are having n equations h1 denoted by f1, f2 up to fn and then each one is having n number of unknown variables x1, x2 up to xn. So, solving this nonlinear system means we need to find out values of x1, x2, xn which satisfy all those equations. Basically, analytically it is very hard to solve and hence here we will I will introduce some nonlinear uh, numerical methods for solving these equations. So, if I want to write this system into a vector form, so just consider a vector f which is a vector of functions f1, f2 up to fn and a vector x which is a vector of unknown variables x1, x2, xn, then this system of nonlinear equations can be written as f x equals to 0. Now, using Taylor series expansion, each of the functions f i where i is from 1 to n can be expanded in the neighborhood of the vectors x i that is x 1, x 2, x n. So, using the Taylor series expansion, we can write f i x plus del x equals to f i x plus j equals to 1 to n del f i over del x j into delta x j plus higher order term. Here you can notice that this particular summation term comes out as a n by n matrix. So, this particular matrix containing the partial derivatives of different f with respect to unknown variables x 1, x 2, x n is called the Jacobian matrix. So, the i j th entry that is an entry in i th row n j th column of the Jacobian matrix j can be given as del f i over del x j that is partial derivative of a i th function f with respect to j th variable. More uh, we can write the equation 1 in matrix form as f of x plus delta x equals to f of x plus j time delta x plus second order and higher order terms. So, here you can notice here we were having a vector we, uh, means f 1 f i x 1 plus f i x 2 plus f i x 3. So, we have written it as f of x and then Jacobian matrix this is coming from the term summation j equals to 1 to n del f i over del x j. So, for i th equation it will be like del f i over del x 1 plus into delta x 1 plus del f i over del x 2 into delta x 2 and so on up to n th. So, we have written it in uh, uh, matrix form in this way. Now, as we are assuming that this delta x is a small quantity, so we can neglect the second order 
and higher order term and moreover the left hand side f x plus del x we can set it to 0. So, we get the system of nonlinear equations for correcting corrections del x that makes each f i approximately 0. Thus, we have since this left hand side is 0. So, we can write j into delta x equals to minus of f x. So, here you can notice we are having this system here Jacobian matrix is known to us for a given x naught or for a given vector x 1, x 2, x n and so we know the f of x and hence it is coming out as a system of linear equation. After solving this system of linear equation, we add the corrections to the older solution that is x nu equals to x old plus delta x and in this way we update our iterations. So, let us modify this particular thing into formulation of Newton reaction method for solving the system of nonlinear equations. So, in case of a single variable Newton reaction method was obtained using the linear approximation of function f around an initial point x naught. So, in case of a system of nonlinear equations, we can write the linear approximation of vector function f around the unknown ve uh, variables vector x naught in this way that is f x equals to f x naught plus j x naught into x minus x naught where j x naught is a n by n matrix and as you know it is the Jacobian matrix which is forming using the partial derivatives of f. So, like this one j f 1 over j x 1, j f 1 over j x 2 up to j f n over j x n. Then we are having in the second row we are having the partial derivatives of the function f 2 with respect to x 1, x 2 up to x n and so on. In the last row we are having the partial derivatives of f n with respect to x 1, x 2 up to x n. Now, we have to find x so that the system f x becomes 0. So, choose x 1 such that f x 0 plus j x 0 x 1 minus x 0 equals to 0. Please note that here all this f of x 0 x 1 minus x 0 all these are vectors and j is a matrix and by n matrix and so on. So, here j x naught is a square matrix. So, we can we can write this system in the this way where x 1 equals to x naught minus inverse of j into f of x naught. However, we can write in this way only when the inverse of j exists and this method is called Newton reaction method for the system of nonlinear equations. So, in algorithmic way we can use this method provided inverse of j exists, but suppose you are having 100 equations with 100 unknown. It means the size of j will become 100 times 100 and hence finding the inverse of a 100 times 100 matrix is not an easy job in terms of computational complexity. So, we can use an alternate instead of finding the inverse of this j what we will do that we will write x 1 minus x 0 as the delta x. So, delta x is the vector of differences in the two iterations let us say in first and second iteration and then j x naught will become we can write the this scheme as j x naught into delta x equals to minus f x naught. We know j for a given x naught as well as f for a given x naught. So, the above system will become a system of n linear equations with n unknown and hence once we can uh, get uh, got this system we can solve it using any scheme which I have told you in the module 1 like Jacobi or gauss seidel those kind of approaches. Once you find x 1 using any one of the iterative scheme for the linear equations you can obtain delta x and from the delta x the new solution can be obtained using x 1 equals to x naught plus delta x. So, in brief we can say 
if we are having the ith vector x i that is in the ith iteration, we will solve this particular equation j of x i into delta x equals to minus f of x i and by solving this we will find delta x and the vector x in next iteration will become x n plus delta x. So, let us take an example of this system. So, here we are having three equations in three unknowns. So, the first equation is 3, uh, 3 times x 1 minus cos of x 2 x 3 minus half equals to 0. The second equation is given as x 1 square minus 81 times x 2 plus 0 0.1 whole square plus sin x 3 plus 1.06 equals to 0. And the third equation is e raised to power minus x 1 x 2 plus 20 x 3 plus 10 pi minus 3 upon 3 equals to 0. So, here you, you can note down that each of the equation is a transcendental equation like in first equation we are having cosine term. Similarly, in the second equation we are having a sine term and in the third equation we are having an exponential term. Let us solve this system of transcendental equations with an initial guess 0 0.1, 0 0.1 and minus 0 0.1. It means in the as an initial solution we will take x 1 as 0 0.1, x 2 as 0 0.1 and x 3 as mi minus 0 0.1. So, now let us assume the first equation is f 1 that is this equation is a function of f 1 x 1 x 2 and x 3. Similarly, second equation let us f 2 and third equation is f 3. So, we can write in this way and hence first of all we need to find out the Jacobian of this system. So, for finding the Jacobian of this system we are having a system like f 1 x 1 x 2 x 3 equals to 0 f 2 x 1 x 2 x 3 equals to 0 and then f 3 x 1 x 2 x 3 equals to 0. Now, the Jacobian matrix will be a 3 by 3 matrix which will be having del f 1 over del x 1 then this element will be del f 1 over del x 2, del f 1 over del x 3. In the same way in the second row we will be having instead of f 1 function f 2. So, del f 2 over del x 1, del f 2 over del x 2 and then del f 2 over del x 3. In the final row we will be having function f 3. that is a partial derivatives of f 3 with respect to x 1, x 2 and x 3. So, hence Jacobian matrix will be a 3 by 3 matrix and here del, del f 1 over del x 1 will become 3, del f 1 over del x 2 will become minus minus will become plus sin x 2 x 3 into x 3. So, x 3 sin x 2 x 3. Similarly, del f 1 over del x 3 will become x, x 2 times sin x 2 x 3. This will be the partial derivatives of f 2 with respect to x 1 with respect to x 2 and with respect to x 3 and the final law is having partial derivatives of f 3 with respect to x 1 x 2 and then x 3. Now, what I will do? I will put these values in the Jacobian matrix that is x 1 0.1, x 2 0.1 and x 3 minus 0.1. So, the Jacobian matrix or initial Jacobian matrix I will say become like this. Moreover, for the initial solution 0 0.1, 0 0.1 and minus 0.1 the value of f 1, f 2, f 3 is given by these three numbers. So, I am having j of x naught, f of x naught. So, what I will do? I will solve the system j of x naught into delta x equals to minus f of x naught and after solving this I, I will get the solution for delta x like this 
that is delta x 1 will become 0 0.39986, delta x 2 will become minus 0 0.080533 and delta x 3 will become this number. So, this is the so, uh, change which we need to make in initial solution to getting the update in first equation. So, adding this in the initial solution, I will get this solution that is 0 0.49, 0 0.019 and minus 0 0.521 as my first uh, mean solution of x in first iteration that is I will denote it as x 1. So, continuing this, now I will use this x 1 and I will find x 2. So, it means I need to solve system j of x 1 into del x equals to minus f of x 1 and hence from there I will get x 2 that is x 2 will be x 1 plus this delta x which I will get using solving this system. So, hence this table uh, so the iterations in for various uh, for various n like earlier initial solution was 0 0.1, 0 0.1, minus 0 0.1, then this is the solution getting in first equation. The last column of this table shows the norm of the difference of the two vectors x obtained in successive iteration, means in current it iteration and in the previous iteration. So, for the second iteration, I will get x1 is 0.5 then this is x 2 and this is x 3 and here this difference will be of order 10 raise to power minus 2. In the third equation these are the values and the difference is of 10 raise to power minus 3. In the fourth iteration difference uh, means these are the values and difference is of 10 raise to power minus 5. So, here you can notice the difference is increasing it means accuracy we are moving towards the exact solution. So, in the fifth iteration these are the numbers value for x 1, x 2 and x 3 and the difference is of order 10 raise to power minus 10. Hence, this is the vector x which is very close to the exact solution and in this way using the successive iterations we can get the numerical solution of x for a system of non-linear equations using the Newton Epson method. So, the above example shows that Newton Epson method converges fastly if we initially have a good approximation means our initial solution is close to the exact solution, but it is not possible always to find a good initial solution for a given problem. So, in those cases the method will become costly to apply. So, for this we will take the another method that is the fixed point iteration method like the earlier which we have done for a single nonlinear equation. We will extend it for a system of nonlinear equations and here again consider a system of n nonlinear equations with n unknowns given by these n equations. Here just I have changed the variables. So, here n variables are x y up to z and like that functions are f 1 f 2 f n. So, we can write this system again in a vector form like this f of x equals to 0, where f is the vector of functions f 1 f 2 f n and x is the vector of variables x y up to z that is n variables. Now, if I take the initial approximation as x naught y naught z naught, then the fixed point iterations for the given nonlinear system of equations is given in this way. So, here you can notice that we are having function g1, g2, gn. So, like you are having the first nonlinear equation, so you have to write the first nonlinear equation that is f1 of x equals to 0 in such a way that x equals to g1 of x. Similarly, for second equation and rest of the equations. So, in uh, the case of a single nonlinear equation, I told you what is the criteria for writing such a g so that our method converges. So, we need to write in this way which converges to the 
numerical solution as to u for i equals to 1 to n. Now, what is the conditions for convergence in this case? So, that is given by this particular result that is suppose that the functions g 1, g 2, g n x and their partial derivatives with respect to various unknown variables x, y up to z for i equals to 1 to n are continuous on a region that contains the fixed point s t up to u. So, here what we are saying that the region where you are having your initial solution partial derivatives your g, your g should be continuous, partial derivatives should be continuous on the same region and your fixed point also lie in the same domain. So, if the initial chosen point is x naught y naught z naught is sufficiently close to the fixed point s t u and the partial derivative of g 1 with respect to first unknown variable at the fixed point plus partial derivative of the g 1 with respect to second unknown variable and so on partial derivative of g 1 with respect to n at unknown variable and some absolute sum of all these terms should be less than 1 similarly for g 2 similarly for n at g n then the fixed point iteration define earlier converge, converges to the fixed point s t u. So, for this let us take an example again. So, here we are taking an example of two equations in two unknowns. So, first equation is x square minus 2 x minus y plus 0 0.5 equals to 0. Second equation is x square plus 4 y square minus 4 equals to 0. So, now we are writing the first equation in the form as x equals to g 1 x. So, here we can choose we can write this equation like x equals to x square minus y plus 0 0.5 upon 2. So, what we have done? We have taken this minus 2 x term into right hand side and then x will become half of x square minus y plus 0 0.5. Similarly, we need to write the second equation as the second unknown variable equals to g 2 of function of all unknown variable. So, here we are writing it as y equals to minus x square minus 4 y square plus 8 y plus 4 upon 8. So, starting with the initial point x naught y naught, we have the sequence x i plus 1 y i plus 1 h. As you did it in case of a single uh, uh, nonlinear equation, do it separately for this g 1 x as well as for g 2 x. So, we get this iterative scheme. Now, start with an initial value of x and y and then you can get the successive approximations of x as well as y which converts towards the fixed point. So, let us check the convergence condition. So, here we are having these two functions we have written it like this. So, partial derivative of g 1 with respect to x is given by 2 x upon 2 that will be x here. Similarly, partial derivative of g 1 with respect to y is given by, so this is my g 2. So, this will be minus 2 x upon 8. So, it uh, sorry with respect to y. So, it will become minus 8 y upon 8. So, it is g 1 of y that is minus half g 2 upon x minus x by 4 and g 2 upon y will be minus y plus 1. So, if you not take this rectangular domain that is x is between minus 0 0.5 to 0.5 and y is in 0 0.5 to 1.5, then you can note down that the partial derivative satisfy the convergence conditions that is del g 1 over del x plus del g 1 over del y will be less than 1. Similarly, del g 2 over del x plus del g 2 over del y will be less than 1 for all values of x and y belonging to this domain. So, here since if we choose any initial solution from this rectangular domain, then our system will converge to the fixed point of g 1 and g 2. 
and fixed point of this system will be minus 0.22 and 0 0.99 which is also in the given rectangular domain. Now, the question is how to choose g, various g in this scheme, so that my method converts, because as you know from the single equation, single nonlinear equation, when we did it using the fixed point iteration method, we can have various choice of g. So, as you know from the nonlinear equation and the related fixed point iteration method that the choice of g is very important for the convergence. The same case apply in case of uh, system of nonlinear equations. So, here again the choice of g is quite important. So, how to choose the best g? Let me explain here. So, let us take we are having a system of nonlinear equations and which is represented in matrix form as f of x equals to 0. So, here f is a vector containing the functions f 1, f 2 up to f n and x is again a vector containing the variables x 1, x 2 up to x n. So, we are having n number of nonlinear equations in n unknown. Now, the fixed point iteration method for this can be written as x equals to g of x. Now, what should be the g, the best choice of g? So, let me write this g x as x that is the same equation plus a constant matrix A which is square matrix of order n into f of x. Since f of x equals to 0, so this term is 0 basically. Now, if I differentiate it partially that, uh, with respect to different x 1, x 2, x n, then here let us take I am getting a matrix capital G x. This will comes out as an identity matrix I plus A is a constant matrix. So, it will be remain like this into the differentiation of this with respect to different x 1, x 2, x n. So, this as you know will become Jacobian matrix. Now, so my capital G x equals to I plus A into Jacobian that is the matrix containing the partial derivatives of different at f with respect to different x. Now, for the rapid convergence or for the convergence this g x should be less than 1. This gives me if I take g x equals to 0 which is the minimum possible value of this g absolute value of g I will get the rapid convergence or the best convergence. So, if I put g x equals to 0 here, what I am getting? I am getting A edge the matrix j inverse because minus j inverse basically, because this is 0. So, I can write it 0 equals to i plus a j. So, I can write or a j equals to minus i and then if I multiplied by j inverse that is the post multiplication I will get a equals to minus j inverse. So, a equals to minus j inverse. So, if I put here I will get g x h x plus or it is minus so minus j inverse into f x and what is this? This g a because my iterative scheme is x n plus 1 of g of x n. So, if I write it x of n plus 1 x of n then 
what is this scheme? This is the Newton Raphson method for system of nonlinear equations and hence the best choice of G gives me the fixed point iteration method same as the Newton Raphson method for the system of nonlinear equations. So, when we do the find the sum maxima or maxima of or minima of a system of more than one variables let us say this one. So, let us ta take this function as x 2 square plus x 2 sin of x 1. So, let us say I need to find out the maxima or minima or extimum of this function. So, here The necessary condition is that del f over del x 1 should be 0 and del f over del x 2 should be 0. So, from this we find the points in the domain of x 1 and x 2 where we need to check the uh, uh, points for maxima or minima of the function f. Basically, we find the stationary points. So, here if I do it, so del f over del x 1 gives me x 2 square plus x 2 cos of x 1 equals to 0 and this second equation gives me twice of x 1 x 2 plus sin of x 1 equals to 0. So, please note that. what is this system? This is a system of nonlinear equations which we have discussed just now. Now, so here you will find this system quite frequently and if we consider a problem of minima of this system and we apply the sufficient condition we will find that the Jacobian matrix should be invertible for having the maxima or minima of this system on the points of solutions of this system. So, hence this is an application of system of nonlinear equations. Now, in this lecture we learn how to solve a system of more than one nonlinear equations using the Newton Raphson as well as fixed point methods. This is the last, this was the last lecture of the module 2 and now we will come to third module in the next lecture. So, we will start our third module where we will discuss about numerical methods for finding the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a matrix. Thank you very much.